Hey guys, uh, so I just got back from Wordstock. I lost my damn mind. Uh, I don't know what happened. I bought more things than I anticipated. Um, the problem is that, you know, they're all new books, and so a lot of them are, like, the list price is like $16, but it's like, oh, buy three for $30. So it's like, that's basically getting a book for free, so yeah. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to go for it, and of course, there's a cat walking. Oh, gosh. Nope. Don't switch. Nope. Okay. Yep, there we go. Two kitties want to be involved. Oh, my babies. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go for it, okay? Uh, the first thing that I have is Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. Uh, I feel like everyone talks about this all the time. I've been really wanting to read this, uh, so I'm glad that they had it. And this is, um, it says Dispatch Books and Haymarket Books, so I'm not sure which like what what that's about but anyways i'm uh, very excited about that and the next three i have from the same um, imprint which is fence books and so that was like the three for 30. so um the first one that i saw and then i was drawn to was this one here um which is i don't really know what it's called mcglue mcglue and this is by atesha um otessa moshfit moshfig um who i'm pretty sure is the author of Eileen that everyone was like raving about earlier so uh yeah picked that up and then I saw this and I was like oh my gosh I don't know what this is but I need to pick it up and then once I picked it up I started flipping through it and I was like uh oh my gosh I need to own this because it's definitely something that I want in my life um it is absolutely beautiful this is a very very sexy photo on the front and then it says will Hollywood let Negroes make love so I'm um, curious as to what, if this feels like it's like clippings from different things that have happened in the past, like incorporating with new um, text. So I'm not quite sure what this is about, but I'm really excited to read this. And then um, this one also looked very intriguing to me, and this is Cor de Leon um, by Ariana uh, Reynes. I don't know, I'm just saying it that way, assuming that it's supposed to be said that way. But it says on the back, it's a book length epistolary love poem. So, um, yeah, I am excited about that, too. I don't know why this uh, just spoke to me. Also, I know basically nothing about any of these books because uh, I basically am just like, hey, okay, let's go for it. Um, and I feel like I mentioned that these are all, those three were fence books. I'm going to try to remember to link the publishers below if I can. Uh, the next one that I have is a rare bird book, a rare bird book, which is funny because there's a bird on this cover. Um, I Typically what I do is I go up to the counter and I say, like, oh, what do you recommend or, you know, what, what do you think I should get? Most of these are very small um, publishers, so they don't have, like, a ton of catalog. And actually, there's a couple of people that I was like, okay, I already own, like, a few of these books because I've been going, um, you know, every year since I got here. And so they always ask, like, oh, what are you into? And my first thing is I'm into, like, you know, things about bad people, things that make me cry. I don't like happy endings. And most people are like, okay, great, you're in the right spot, which is really funny to me. Um, I have no idea what this is, but this fit that bill. And maybe I should tell you what it's called. <laughs> Um, Hummingbird by Jude Angelini. So I think this is a memoir. Um, and yeah, dark, deviant, and deliriously funny. Jude Angelini writes in the colloquial vein of Charles Bukowski, which is funny since, <laughs> um, using his unique natural voice to tell stories from his life. He writes about his sexual encounters, both strange and intimate, alongside stories from his childhood and his tell all experiences with science drugs. That's in quotes. So we'll see. And then this was the other one um, from that same publisher. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Rare Bird Books. Uh, so this is a porno memoir. So the girl is in the porn industry. And I guess there's like very graphic scenes in this book. The girl that was selling me on this book was saying how she was trying to publish it somewhere. And they were saying like, okay, but we have to cut like this, this, this. And then Rare Bird was like, no, we'll leave all of it. So she went with Rare Bird. Um, so there's going to be some very graphic scenes of sex. And I'm hoping that they are not traumatizing, but we'll find out eventually. Um, the next books that I have are from Microcosm Publishing Company. So at this event, sorry, I'm talking like super fast. I'm worried I'm going to run out of disk space. Um, it's publishers, like, you know, a bunch of different publishers. They're not all necessarily Portland based, but this one, it like, I have walked past their building. Um, it's like a big greenhouse. And so I picked up these two small uh, things. It's uh, the CIA makes science fiction unexciting. Number six is this one. This is the thing that caught my eye initially, and it's the life of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. So it's just a book about his life, and I'm really excited to read this. And then this is another of the same, The CIA Makes Science Fiction Unexciting, 
And I guess it just says Dark Deeds and Daring Do from 1950 to today. So I think this is like the first couple of collections since, um, I don't know, th this other one says number six on the front. So it's just like a bunch of random stuff <laughs> is about the CIA. Um, the next thing that I have, uh, definitely, I feel like also a thing about these things is that like, I don't necessarily like want to. I don't know. So the, the, the people at the tables, like their job is to try to sell you the books, obviously. So like they don't understand that I'm trying to like go all over the place and I'm spending way too much money. But so this guy, he like stopped me. Not this guy, but um, the guy from this, uh, it's um, Red Dress Press. And so I was walking past and he was like, oh, you're going to remember us, da, da, da. And it was super funny. And he was kind. And um, I picked this up and I started reading it. And it, it seems like a good, uh, like the writing was good. I feel like that's usually what I check if I don't know what the book is about and I don't want to know what the book is about. I usually just pick it up and start reading from the very beginning. And if like the prose seems like something that I'd get along with, then I just like go for it and give it a shot. And if I don't like it, then at least, you know, I'm giving my money to like a very small publishing company and not um, Amazon. <laughs> um, but hopefully I like this. Um, the Yeah, it's, I don't really know what it's about, but it is a novella of some sort. So yeah, we'll see. And the next two are um, Yes, Yes books, which is, I'm um, pretty sure it's just poetry. I have a lot of poetry, which is funny because I don't really read poetry. But they did uh, Denez Smith's Insert Boy, um, which I got last year and I read and I absolutely loved. And I was hoping that they had his new collection because he has a new one out. And he was he did an author event that I missed because I was going through the stupid, I mean, not the stupid books, the fair, but, you know, I got distracted by the books and I forgot about the the events, but then I met two girls later. I'm talking way too fast. Sorry, I've been drinking because I spent too much money today, so I'm like, <laughs> you know. Um, and they said that, that it was, like, impossible to get in, so I feel, like, a little bit better that I didn't try to get in because I wouldn't have been able to. But anyways, so they did not publish, I guess, Rare – was it? Shoot. They said the name of the publisher that did it. Anyways, I'll pick it up at another time, but I got two other um, books from them. This first one is Kissing Caskets, so – I'm going to 100% cry. Um, this is by Mahogany L. Brown. And, like, look at that stunning, stunning cover. That is gorgeous. So I I just saw this at the very end right when I was purchasing this one, um, which is Guilt by Raina Shir Shirali. Um, and I think she was saying uh, – because I feel like something that I really enjoy reading about is, like, the experience of a person being in a place where they aren't necessarily, like – Fitting in, I don't know if fitting in is the right word, but this is um, an Indian um, woman who moved or like lives in the U.S. I don't know if she was born or raised in the U.S., but it's like trying to manage the two different cultures that you're a part of. Like you're part of the U.S. culture, but then you've got this Indian heritage, and so you're trying to be, you know, I, I, I find that very, very interesting how we have to, I really need to start listening to Code Switch, the podcast, but I find it very interesting how we have to, um, incorporate like we're multifaceted humans and I, I enjoy reading about those facets that people have that makes sense right okay great let's keep going next one that I have is oh and that was a uh, yes yes books um what was that one uh, the next one that I have is from tin house books and I own a ton of tin house books because usually if um when I get my indispensable from Powell's it's a tin house book that they provide but anyways, um, I saw this one. I thought it was interesting. Again, the short story collections. I'm just really into them. And this is Kiss Me Someone by Karen Shepard. Shepard. I don't know why I said that's so weird. Um, yeah, I like asked about this and they said that it was very good. I feel like maybe they're like, they have to say that things are good, but I believe them because it's Tin House. So, you know. Um, and the next one that I have is a propeller book. Propeller books. Uh, the book that I got from them last year that I super super enjoyed was uh, Nine Simple Patterns for Complicated Women, and this book, excuse me, actually doesn't come out until next month, but they're um, selling it early since you know there's like a big book fair thing, so they you know had it out early, and he said that it was super good, so I believed him. The next one that I have, oh my gosh, I could not pick a book from this publisher. They all looked so good. Um, where is the publishing company on this? It's Chin Music Press. And they had like at least four or five titles that I was like, I need this. But, you know, I don't think that they were doing a discount on their books or I, yeah, I don't think they were doing a discount on their books. And I had already bought so many. So I just got the one. But they had a ton of things that sounded so good. There was one that was, um, oh, my gosh. Yokohana Yankee or something like that that's about like five generations of 
um, it, it was just like there, there was just so, so many good books. But anyways, this one is big in Japan and this is another, he, I asked about it and he said like, it's, you know, weird and unsettling and dark. Uh, he said dark comedy. So those are my trigger words. So I went for it. Uh, the next one, this is another poetry collection. This is Uh Oh, of the collected poetry stories and erotic sass of Derek C. Brown. Uh, this guy was at the table and like picked out a poem for me to read and he signed my copy. And so, you know, I can't, can't really say no to that. But <laughs> uh, the poem that he picked out was um, very good. And so I am excited. I'm just, it's just hard because I'm not like super good at poetry reading, at uh, reading poetry. But hopefully I, um, the rest of that is good too. Uh, the next one that I have is... Oh, and that is from, oh my gosh, uh, Bloody, it's like Bloody Hell Poetry, I think. Oh my gosh, they they published, they had Pansy at their table too by um, Andrea Gibson. Um, right Bloody Publishing, I guess that's what it is. Right Bloody Publishing. Um, the next one that I have here is from Perfect Day, and... I got two of theirs. I read one of them, which was the um, like anonymous little book, and I really, really liked that. And um, she said that this was kind of like in the same vein. And it is What About the Rest of Your Life by Sung um, Yim. I'm starting to realize that I'm, I'm a big fan of like, yeah, I mean, I'm not realizing because I, I've known that for a while, but like interpersonal relationships and like things not going well, I just like reading about it. So I think she said this is like in the same kind of style as that. Um, the next one that I got is uh, from Hawthorne Books, and I just, I knew that I wanted this book, so I was like, oh, I'm just going to get that. Let's not be at this table for five hours, and that is Dora, a headcase by Lydia Yuknovich. Um, I read The Chronology of Water by her, and I thought it was absolutely wonderful. She has a new book co out called The Book of Joan, which is like a dystopian um, type thing. Oh, no, the cats are doing something bad over there. Um, <laughs> and so I didn't buy that, though, because it's in a hardcover, and, you know, she's got other books that I can read, like this one. And so when I was at the table, she was, like, asking me about it, and then I said that I had read The Chronology of Water, and she said that she that this one is very funny and that she wrote it directly after that one, and so, like, this kind of, like, brought her out, because The Chronology of Water is a very heavy, dark, sad um, memoir. And so this book kind of like lifted her up a little bit. So I'm I'm also very excited. I feel like I've said I'm very excited to read all these books. Sorry, y'all. But I feel like that's like a common thing that happens when people do book hauls, right? Uh, so anyways, at the very end of the day, I did go to a book talk that Lydia was part of. So I did get this sign. That's why my name is, my name is on the sticker. Um, and so it was like a dystopian and fiction type book. And so it was her. Um, another guy whose book... I can't quite remember, which is a bummer. I have it written down on paper somewhere because I want to get it once it comes out, paper book, paper, paperback. But the other one, I was like, I need this right now. And that is American War by Omar El Akkad. Um, so I, yeah, he, I got this slide too. Um, and yeah, he, it was, <laughs> there's just some people that I was just like, I wish I could like, you're just so wonderful. Like Tiny C Codes, like I just, your brain, you're so wonderful. Like, I just wish everyone were like you. <laughs> or not like like you, but, you know, it's just uh, so much brilliance in this man. So I'm really, really, really excited to read this. And hopefully I read it before it comes out paperback because if not, but I got it signed. So it's okay. Anyways, um, and so then the next three books and that is just, I don't know who publishes this. This was just a, a Powell's purchase. Yeah, Alfred Hickenoff. <laughs> it's fine. Um. The next ones that I have are published by um, Catapult. Is it, It's multiple imprints, though. Um, this one is a soft skull imprint. And then this one is... Uh, how, how funny, I got one of each counterpoint. I think those are the three. Um, so this first one is called Sex and Rage by Eve Babbitts. And I guess this was published in uh, 79... Um, I don't know what happened, but they are, uh, repub they republished it, and I saw someone else that had, like, a tote bag with this on it, and so I was like, oh, I don't know. It sounds intriguing. It reminds me of something that I can't quite put my finger on. And then I asked her, before I got that one, I asked her what she recommended. This is one of the cases where I got three books at the table, and uh, she said this was her favorite book um, at, that they publish, and it's A Loving Faithful Animal by Josephine Rowe, or Rowe, Rowe. Um, and it is dark, like how I wanted. And then I was like, what about this one? And then she said, oh, this is her second favorite. I don't know if that's just a line to get me to buy it, but I went for it. And that's The Amputee's Guide to Sex by Jillian Weiss. And she was like, she was, before I left, she was like, I really, really hope, you know, you would like that. So 
thankfully all the books that I got are like kind of on the smaller side so I'm trying to like you know meet that good read school aka read super short books in the month of December and then uh, the next three books yeah it was so sweet I was like it was my first it was the first table that I went to and I was like uh I won't you know I only wanted to get two because I like didn't want to spend a ton of money and then he gave me two for the price of three which is super nice and these were the coffee house press people and so um the one I so I got this one um mean by Miriam um Gorba which um is um, a memoir and on the back it says true crime memoir and ghost story so uh they said that this was like very experimental and strange so you know and then um this one I just was like I need to own this because look at it and it's um Beneath the Spanish by Victor Hernandez Cruz and I don't know if this is translated but when I read it I will tell you because I am this video is so long because there's so many stinking books and then the next one that I was like okay I need to get because he the guy that told me the books he actually he, he does have an essay in here and this is Little Boxes 12 Writers on Television a very special episode about what it means to have that blue glow as part of your cultural DNA comedy drama serial daytime so it's um, I think 12 different essays on how like shows um, affected them growing up and so there's like Twin Peaks, The Cosby Show, Days of Our Lives, um, Dawson's Creek, Daria. I'm really excited about the Daria one. I was kind of hoping that Girlfriends would be on here but it's not because Girlfriends was like one of my favorite shows growing up which I feel like I've mentioned before because I watched tons of shows about women in their 20s and 30s when I was like 10 because the other one that I really liked was Suddenly Susan and like just shoot me and half and half. I liked a lot of weird stuff. Anyways, I don't know why I'm talking so much. Then I got this one that is in shrink wrap and then I'm going to probably just keep in shrink wrap until I read it. And that's Modern Love by Constance De Jong. And this is um, an ugly duckling press. And it says written between 1975 and 1977. Um, it's a forgotten classic of narrative prose innovation. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, those are all the books that I got. And then I also, oh my gosh, I can't believe this video is so long right now. Ah! Um, I subscribed to a bunch of magazines to subscribe to. Uh, this one does not have, like, they, they've only had two issues. This is the, I bought the first issue, which they had last year. Um, and so they're not, like, coming out with them. Like, they're not mailing them to people. But it's called um, Opossum. And I'm excited about it. And this one is very fun because it has, it comes with like a little record at the back. I think it's um, just people reading the poetry, but I have no idea. And so, yeah, it's just, you know, a thing. And then I subscribed to Fence. This one, I believe, comes out um, twice a year. And this is the summer 2017 issue. And uh, this is very funny artwork that's not, not funny, but, you know, interesting artwork that's on it. And yep, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. I also subscribed to Ziziva. Ziziva. I don't know how to pronounce that. They pronounced it and then I forgot subsequently immediately. But this is another one that I've been meaning to subscribe to for a while. Um, I know that in the, it's one of the collections or journals that they look at for the best short story uh, series. So, you know. And then I got, and I subscribed to uh, Willow Springs, so I got number 80 here. Uh, I think I got an issue of this last year that I haven't read yet. And then I subscribed to Believer, because I also was meaning to subscribe to this. I have a problem. I'm going to finish this video and then go read immediately. And then the last thing I subscribed to was Book Forum. Uh, they gave you like a, a, a free copy of the current issue but I already bought the current issue so I just got a back um, volume and this is from February March of 2015 uh, I thought it was very interesting mostly this here um, um, uh, Michael Greenberg on Chilean fiction after the dictatorship and color lines behind the policing crisis and uh, black writers the black writers dossier Ooh -hoo -hoo! Um, getting real about the ISIS threat. This, I don't know. This this one like really just spoke to me in this cover. So I went for it. Those are all the things that I purchased. I'm probably not going to upload this video for a while. Not a while, but I have to rewatch it and like write down the different things so that I can link them below so that you can go check out all of these cool publishing houses and magazines that I have mentioned. Uh, thanks for watching this obnoxiously long video. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.